Okay, this video is about takeaways. And there are certain times in selling situations when sitting with a prospect that we're going to completely shift gears that might seem counterintuitive rather than encouraging them to use our services or inspiring them or trying to tell them how great it is or how much it's going to benefit them. We are actually going to communicate that maybe this isn't for them. And um, human nature is such uh, much like a child that, that wants something, the more that you tell them they can't have it, the more they actually decide that they want it. So the takeaway is something that can be used in, in very specific situations. You know, the most obvious ones is when you're getting a lot of resistance, you know, and you can tell that somebody's being very guarded with you and uh, just is really resisting for the sake of resisting and letting you know that they're in control, the takeaway might be the thing that shifts that. You know what, you're right, Mrs. Jones, maybe this isn't the program for you. You know, maybe this isn't the program for you because you know, you may not feel comfortable in this environment. You know, we would sure like you to, but we're totally willing to admit that this may not be for you. You know, this, you'll see it on landing pages and sales pages all the time. Warning, you know, if you're the type of person that is going to read something but not take action or not put this into effect or not consider why this is important to you, don't even bother to read any further. It's almost like that, like, fractional insult that actually makes people uh, want it a little bit more. So to give you a real world example of this, I actually just received an email from uh, one of my salespeople in one of my facilities the other day that I thought would be a really, really great illustration of this. So this is going to work terribly or it's going to crash and burn miserably, but we're going to give it a shot here. So I'm going to read this uh, email to you and it says, what do I do when I'm getting a lot of resistance to the why, what, how questions? What he means by that is that I've conditioned salespeople and you'll find in this course to always begin conversations with Mrs. Jones, why are you here? You know, why is this important to you? How would your life change if I could snap my fingers and change anything you wanted? What would you feel like? What would be different in life? So that we can start to get in touch with those emotions of why they're there. But certainly sometimes you'll get people that don't want to respond to these questions or they don't respond in the way you think. So he continues. They don't respond well to the, the why, what, how questions. They're borderline offended in some cases. These are ladies that do have weight to lose but and could have health issues because of it, etc. But they don't want to seem to open up about their emotional connection to weight loss. My thought is I'm not making them feel comfortable enough. So I back off and give, give them some value and try to make them feel as comfortable as possible. Then go back to those questions and still get resistance. What does this mean? What am I doing wrong? So the reality is in this particular situation, when I asked a couple more questions, I learned that they booked the, the appointment was booked because my administrative person is very diligent about following up with people and booking sales appointments, which is fantastic. What you want, you want to get in front of as many people as possible. But what's interesting is you get people like this that even though they have way to lose, even though we understand the health implications of that, that's not actually the reason that they're there. In this particular case, when I asked a couple more questions, I learned that this particular woman was a friend of a friend who was also coming to the gym. And uh, somewhere in her conversation, excuse me, she responded that uh, she was there to support her friend, you know, and that she, if her friend was doing something, she just thought it was a good idea, she should do it with her friend. The point is, is we have to identify what is the outcome that people actually want. So with this individual, as trainers, we know that they obviously have weight to lose. We can see it. We can probably see in their body language they're uncomfortable, self-conscious, concerned about that. They truly do want to look and feel better, but they're not willing to admit that yet, right? So as trainers, we can't project what we think their outcome needs to be and uh, what we think they want on them. The reality is, is what we needed to sell this individual on was simply the uh, affirmation that by doing this, they're a good person for supporting their friend which will make them feel better, okay, because they want to know that they're a good person and supporting their friend. And secondary to that is that second outcome of they will also look and feel better. But that's not the main topic of conversation, right? So when met with resistance, how the takeaway works in that situation is it becomes, you know, Mrs. Jones, I mean, it's really noble that you want to support your friend. I mean, I love my friends too. But the reality is, is this service is very exclusive and an expensive service. You know, how do you feel about that? Is this something that you're willing to do and, and to commit to something that, like this that's expensive, you know, to support your friend? 
Because if it's just a matter of going to the gym, Mrs. Jones, I can make a number of recommendations for you. Now, this may seem like a risky thing to do, but the point is, is that you're establishing something really, really important in your relationship here, is that you respect them enough to acknowledge that maybe you're not sure if your services are the best choice for them. You know, and I don't know about you, but as a consumer, I really respect that. You know, if I go to see the car salesman, the electronic salesman, the insurance salesman, whatever the case may be, and they have the confidence to say, hey, you know what, from what you told me so far, I'm not sure if my service is the best choice for you. How do you feel about it? Because at that point, you're either going to get a yes, I'm willing to do that, I'm willing to spend the money and contribute to this, or a no. And if it's a yes, great, carry on. But if it's a no, you need to shift gears in trying to deliver real value for them today. You know, value that says, um, what's, you know, what can I help you with today? What can I make sure that this wasn't a waste of time for you? Because you're actually going to sell them on reinforcing their affirmations and you're going to sell them on taking the time to actually care about you. That's how you overcome their concerns with using your service anyway. Or at the very least, know that they fall into that 10, 15, or 20 percent that you couldn't close, but when talking to somebody else, you just want them to say great things about you. So hopefully that gives you at least a basic understanding of takeaways. I know we're going to talk about this more in future videos, but I wanted to give you something to get started with today.